the Roman Empire, one of the most powerful empires ever, lasting almost a thousand years but in our memories forever. But how did the Romans become so powerful? Space Marines. My name is Alex. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. The channel is 52 miniatures and this is Making Money Painting Space Marines. Now you might be saying, hold on a minute, that can't be right. Space Marines are not real. And even if they were, they wouldn't exist yet, and especially not then. But let's face it, fact has become a bendy word as of late. History is now shaped by trolls, and besides, I spoke to Spock, and he said he met space marines when he went to Rome. Also, I've always wanted to make a miniature diorama featuring Warhammer space marines and Romans. Receiving some free Hail Caesar epic miniatures with my copy of War Games Illustrated tipped the scales. That and the HBO series Rome. So what we're building is a small miniature diorama. I've done several of these in the past, playlist linked above, placing space marines from the world of Warhammer into alternative settings. Also, if you're after some coaching thoughts on painting red miniatures or red space marines, keep watching. The really tiny epic miniatures gave me the idea to try and make a diorama with a forced perspective, like large scale marine in front and row after row of advancing Roman legionnaires behind it. And as this is the grim dark future past, lots of conquered enemies to tread over. Propaganda that would make Caesar proud. From the Age of Darkness box, I got a space marine. These space marines, from the times of the Horus Heresy, I guess we can call them vintage looking, I favour their looks, and this box seems to contain an endless supply. Luckily, Warhammer is not only a ri uh, heavily inspired by great sci-fi like the Dune books, for example, it's all very Roman inspired when it comes to space marines, with insignias like eagles or aquila or Ac Aquila, uh, my Latin isn't great, uh, decorating most things, as well as some rather fitting Centurion crest style helmets. I did need some more Roman soldiers, however, as well as some conquered enemies. War Games Atlantic was the great supplier of STL files for the Roman soldiers. I really like their digital stuff, War Games Digital on my mini factory. A lot of different historical and fantasy stuff, some meant as supplements for their molded plastic kits, resulting in easy to kit bash compatibility between printed elements and purchased hard plastic kits. From another supplier, I found dead Greek warriors, so apparently we're conquering Greece in this diorama. For me, this is one of the great things with 3D printing. I can now print these miniatures at varying scale to build up my forced perspective scene. If I would have searched the darkest corners of an obscure hobby shop, I might have found a box of dead Greek soldiers. But would they have been three different scales? I think not. For this, I just love 3D printing, my creative bits printing machine. Oh, and I also snuck in some of my custom Roman shields. Long story, but the Roman shields were made for an Age of Sigma project and are free to download, linked down in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe while you're down there. Thanks. The base for my diorama is a simple piece of wood. I've used identical pieces for all my other Space Marine dioramas. It's a bit of a theme. Now, the row of epic scale miniatures from Warlord Games at the back are actually not Roman soldiers. Ironically, these are what I think is some of Hannibal's soldiers. But the row of shields will do the trick regardless. We've then got two sizes of Roman legionnaires, corpses, and of course, the space marine to place. After looking at this for a while, I decided that some elevation at the back was going to be needed. The smaller miniatures would otherwise be hidden by the inevitable pile of corpses. To make things neat, I crafted a back piece from Plasticard. I glued in some old bits of sprue to fill up some of the volume and then moved on to designing the hill and ground in mixes of epoxy putties, green stuff and milliput. This is a little fancy, I guess. 
uh, a hill like this could just as easily be made out of air drying clay, for example. But I'm on a bit of a roll and working with an epoxy putty that does not shrink when it cures means I can actually move on to painting even though things haven't fully cured. I can also press the miniatures into the ground, making things look rather realistic and be sure that they'll stick there. I'm using a homemade sculpting tool and a stiff brush to try and shape the ground into something, well, ground-like. I use some bits of cork bark as larger rocks, as well as some smaller stones and sand as miniature rocks. Trying to use only the finer grain stuff at the back, keeping the larger stuff up front, again trying to help that forced perspective along. And there we have it, a simple but rather effective little diorama ready for paint. Now we're going to paint a lot of red. It's the Roman thing. The Space Marine is in fact going to be all red, almost like a blood angel. So let's talk red. Down here. Hi. Have you ever heard about Squarespace? Yeah, sure, the sponsor of this video, but I was just... Exactly. Let me tell you some more. Yeah, okay. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for creating websites, an intuitive platform that I've been using for some time. Lucky for me, there's no need for expertise. You can choose between carefully curated layouts or start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. A tailored website to suit your needs up in no time, optimized for all devices and with optimized SOE tools so you show up more often to more people. For me, Squarespace has been a great tool, starting with a nice template that I can adjust for my specific needs. I've created a website with introductions to my work, with galleries of my miniatures and such. It also hosts my online store. Customizing the shop with print-on-demand t-shirts as well as my own artworks and downloads has worked out well and with a back-end that makes my side of things simple when dealing with deliveries and fulfillment. The checkout and payment options for customers works seamlessly, accepting credit cards, PayPal and Apple Pay, but also pay later options like Afterpay and Clearpay. If you're looking for somewhere to display your art, sell merch, if you have a painting service or sell STLs, start up a website for your own game store or club, check out Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash 52 miniatures to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, thank you, Alex. And thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring this video. Now, red, for me at least, is tricky to paint because I find it difficult to highlight. Things tend to end up in pink territory or orange territory rather than looking like bright red. Which is why I prefer to instead go for interesting shading, leaving highlights very limited or totally out of the equation. Here's a simple demonstration. This is not a foolproof step-by-step guide by any way. I just want to try and evoke some thoughts that might make red a little more fun to paint. This is a test mini that I've primed with a military green coloured primer, something that should be available to most. In a very plebeian manner, I shall now hastily dry brush this with a warm white. This is kind of wet and sloppy for dry brushing, but there we go. Because green mixed with red makes brown, when we add a rather transparent red contrast paint onto this, this is Blood Angel's red diluted with just a little contrast medium, we get some great grim dark brown shadows to our red. A more vibrant green would create something more dramatic, a blue would render us some more purple shadows and so on. Using techniques like this with a coloured shadow is a great way to get more dramatics out of your contrast paints and a better looking red. So the fancy version of this is using an airbrush. I've primed my Space Marine black and then sprayed it with green. The diorama is military green. I then spray both with white from up top and from the sides, leaving a green tint in all the shaded areas. This is called a zenithal prime. Like the previous dry brush, just more fancy looking. After spraying on some Blood Angels contrast paint on the Space Marine, I get this nice red with rather awesome brown shadows. 
For the diorama, I decided to go for a very different style red. This is an ink. The colors called Caput Mortum, once said to have contained ground-down mummies. Sprayed on top of the two-toned prime surface, this results in some nice brown in the shadows and a sort of muted salmon pink in the mid-tones and highlights. If you do have access to an airbrush and you've already decided to prime all your little toy soldiers in one solid red colour, there is another way to add some shading. Spraying some paint from underneath at choice areas to create a shading effect. I'm using it here to enhance what I've started on my Space Marine. Again, I like using transparent paints. Choose the colour you think works for you. But my very much favourite for red is the Creed Camo Contrast Paint. In thin layers it renders brown, but when more is added it renders this great almost green to almost blue. Utterly tasty, in my opinion. I used the same Creed Camo on the diorama to build up some more browns, but also used a regular opaque, cool sort of turquoise paint to give me some more dramatic bluish shadows to complement the inevitable red to come. Now looking at that, the diorama obviously is prepped for something different, a cinematic backdrop, but the Space Marine is pretty cool looking because of all that dramatic shading. I've added a bit more of a saturated red on the shoulder pads and head. More on that in a second, but not many highlights are going to be needed to make that look stellar thanks to the cool shadows. But before we proceed, I need to get some details in place so that I can see how much final work the red needs. Because it's all about context. I don't know how many of you have watched the series Rome. It's a bit rough and at times a little traditional, but I really like it. Obviously, with a huge budget, huge sets, great acting, scripts, camera work, uh, to me it kind of represents that period in time when television changed into what we know today. Huge production series to an extent replacing feature film. I also keep coming back to it because it's in a way not very dated or stylized. I don't know if there was a conscious decision to make it look like the epic films of old like Ben-Hur or Spartacus or a spaghetti western for that matter. Traditional filmmaking, I guess. There's no modern stylized feel, no orange and teal, no CGI, no green screen vibe. It's all filmed on film, too. I feel like I'm watching a classic. And that kind of rubbed off a little on the vibe I'm going for when painting this diorama. I want a bit of a film vibe, maybe a bit of a cinematic look, but no fancy effects. No OSL, no Uhu glue gore, no UV resin, no over-the-top grim dark or rust chipping scratches. Just a proper red space marine fresh out of Caesar's space marine factory. Yeah, we'll have to solve that piece of the puzzle at some point. Uh, time travel and imperial friends with benefits, perhaps. Thanks, Julius, for all the inspiration. Take this here, Space Marine, as a token of my friendship. Please don't scratch it. Oh, and any tips on how to smite heretics would be appreciated. M Momento Mori, and I mean you, not me. Yours truly, the God Emperor of the future. Now, let's finish off the red. If you want to get your hands on a great red, I'd recommend this red from Chimera. As mentioned previously, I sprayed a little amount of it on top of the Space Marine, but decided to make a more visible example of that step. Painting red is often very much about saturation. Saturation, to a certain extent, replaces highlights for me. As you can see, this Chimera red is very red, but very saturated. Yet when all of the model is that saturated, it's kind of difficult to know where to go. So I prefer to start a bit subdued and use the very saturated red as a highlight. So we have a mini painted with Chimera Red. It's super vibrant, but yeah, I'd have a bit of a hard time knowing where to take that. Compared to the mini on the right that is painted exactly like our Space Marine. Just ignore that weird looking left shoulder pad, by the way. The Blood Angels contrast paint with that browner shading because of the green underneath is a lot more subdued. But now, when I spray just a dash of Chimera Red on top of that, we get all kinds of goodness. The saturated red paint really makes those shoulder pads pop, but only because we have some interesting muted reds and brown shadows to contrast it. Mind you, through the eyes of the beholder, or the guy with the camera, in this case, me. 
despite the fact that the theme of my diorama is about some hardcore convincing that the Pax Romana is the only way to go, my painting tips are not about telling you that this is the best or only way to do things. Rather, I just want to get you experimenting a bit, hopefully a little more inspired. Anyway, now we've got something worth highlighting. Highlighting red is, as I said earlier, a kind of a pink or an orange affair. And I often prefer the orange way. I actually have a specific paint here, a rather desaturated orange, ember orange from P3, that is my go-to red highlight paint. It's been with me for ages and I keep using it just for this specific purpose. I mix in the orange in varying degrees with red, leaving some pure orange for the final edge highlights. How much one highlights sort of correlates in the end with how orange one wants things. I don't want orange, so I try and stop myself a warm red. A few thin layers of brighter and brighter warm red on some of the areas facing upwards, as well as adding some edge style highlights to add definition to the model. Because of all the previous work with the shading and red saturation, not much is needed really in terms of highlights to generate contrast. The highlights rather are a means to create definition, enhancing some of the detail on the armor. We now have a pretty bona fide <coughs> looking space marine, and I used the same paints already on my wet palette to add red to the diorama. And that is indeed where most of the continued work is needed. I'm glad for my spontaneous sort of pink to blue base coats on this. Not only has it created an eerie dreamlike setting that inspires me while painting this rather gruesome scene, the colors lend themselves as base coats for all the varying elements in the scene. The Space Marine is very correct in a way. No nonsense primary red straight in your face. And I want to keep that effect, even enhance it by its surroundings. So I'm deliberately trying to keep the diorama more muted. Also using secondary type colors like orange, greenish blues, violets, that kind of stuff, to boost the presence of the red marine. Apart from all the reds, of course. I'm also attempting that almost monochromatic effect film can sometimes have, where leather, skin, cloth, dirt kind of blends together into one shade. Oh, and a few splashes of vibrant green will do wonders to contrast your reds, by the way. Just saying. We don't talk much about boosting colours with the help of other colours. This is colour theory stuff and is probably one of the secrets of great miniature painting. Like, red paint mixed with green paint makes brown, but red paint next to green paint makes the two look more like themselves. I'm not quite qualified to talk about this, but I'm sure our heroes have videos on the subject. I gave the dreary landscape a bit of shape with greys and browns, but I also made sure to keep that pale turquoise blue thing going. Something about that whole vibe there that I really like, and I want to make sure I'm not covering it up in an urge to paint everything. Deciding that this is like a backdrop also helps in that regard, not dealing with having to paint awesomely detailed miniatures, rather painting a mood or a scene. They say the road to hell is paved with good intentions, and most probably the road to Rome is paved with, well, blood at least, if a space marine is walking it. Old Latin proverb. Painting blood and gore is something I do a little too seldom, layering on very deep red, working my way up to something more freshly spilled, I was strangely enjoying myself. Seen from the outside, the man in the bunker listening to classical music on BBC3 at loud volumes, smiling to himself while painting corpses would probably be seen as a bit of an outsider. But there we are. Doing scenes like this is a little weird, but this is war games after all. Games Workshop does a great job at selling annihilation, extermination, murder and chaos in a colourful manner without a single corpse laying about. There's a lot of blood splatter on chainsaws, but where's the streets of vanquished heretics' corpses terrain set? Or the highway line with crucified enemies of the state anniversary model? So I mean, someone needs to set the story straight. My last addition to this diorama and red space marine is some oil washes. The overall shading is great, but there are some crevices and stuff that need a deeper shade. I could go in and try to paint that with acrylic paint, but I figured an oil wash would be the swiftest way to get things done. 
I mix equal parts black, indigo and burnt umber oil paint with about 10 times as much white spirit. The ratio is a bit difficult to be precise about, but if you're new to oil washes and want to try them out, just experiment a little. It's the only way to learn. The reason for mixing these paints is to create something not totally black, a shade I think will match my red shadows. It's always a little tricky to see how things work out as wet paint is a lot darker than the final dried result. But this mix did in the end turn out perfect for the red. For the rest of the diorama I used the same wash on choice details, uh, but it could have benefited from something a little darker. And then we're done. I left the oil washes to dry overnight, came back to remove the tape around the base and got the first look at my completed Roman Space Marine diorama. I hope you like it. I had a lot of fun with this one. I think the forced perspective works. Uh, a little bit surprised, to be honest. What do you think? And the red Space Marine is looking rather stylish. Proper poster boy in proper Roman propaganda setting. Veni vidi vici suckers. I'd like to take the time to thank my dear patrons for the continued support. Without Patreon, my work with these videos would not be something I could keep doing as I currently am, and so all my videos are dedicated to my patrons. Please, if you enjoy my videos, consider joining the Patreon. A few dollars a month from you means a lot more dead hoplites in miniature dioramas for me. Also, thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video and creators like myself. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.